welcome to another episode of How to Be a Great Player. In today's episode, we're looking at how to play an evil character. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. So here is the first rule in how to play an evil character. You play a good character. That's right. You heard me correctly. These are my six cardinal rules for role-playing an evil character. And it's all based around playing a good character. A super good character. And if you do it any other way, I guarantee you will probably be hated or killed by the rest of the party. If you want to be truly evil, you've got to be truly good. Rule number one. You are only evil towards others. Your party will never experience your evil. You will kill children belonging to NPC women. You will eat the faces off of NPC men. You will destroy the last unicorn in the forest. But you will never do it to your party. Why, you might ask? Well, for several reasons. And this is what every truly evil person knows. You are trying to impress your party. This is rule number two. How can you be listed as the truly most evil evil of evils if there's no one around to appreciate how evil you are? If you watch any TV series ever made that's a cartoon, the evil character has lots of people around them all the time. You have to impress these people. You have to show them just how evil you are. So when you are busy raping, pillaging, and plundering that poor nun's drawers, and her as well, you need to have witnesses to see just how truly sadistic and evil and what a bastard you are. Otherwise, you're just a dick. Go and watch the other video if you don't know what that is. So you need to have your party around, alive and healthy, to witness your acts of true evilness. Rule number three, you need to keep them alive. There's no point in betraying your loyal henchman to the good guy, because then there's not going to be anyone to see how truly evil you are when you destroy the good guy, using his mother as bait and his sister as entertainment for the evening. So you need to keep your party alive using all of your evil cunning, treachery and deception to lie, smuggle and basically weasel them out of any trouble that they find themselves in, which you may or may not have got them into, but you will use all of your evil to get them out of alive and in one piece. Rule number four, you will defend your party. You will remain loyal to them and you will die for them, provided that it's the hands of a truly good paladin or that horrid Captain Picard. But if he manages to defeat you and you are saving your party by being truly evil whilst being defeated, well, that's kind of your goal. You have to be evil and evil has to be thwarted. That's the general rule. Because, and here's a little insight into that, if you are truly evil and you triumph, doesn't that mean that the right side, the correct side, has won? And if it's the correct side, could you not argue that the evil was actually the good being oppressed by the evil who was the good, but now because they have been defeated, they can be labeled as evil because the evil ones who are now good are good because they triumphed over the other ones and made it a different world in which the good are bad and the bad are good? Rule number five. You may only backstab your party if it's part of a cunning double play to convince the truly good guys that you are an evil betrayer of people only so that they let their guard down to allow your party to infiltrate their party so you can then stab everybody in the back and save your party in the end. Not only are you truly evil because you were willing to sacrifice your party, but you were truly evil insofar as you snuggled your party into the belly of the beast and managed to triumph. So, you do not backstab your party if only you gain something by it. Because, rule number six, why are you evil in the first place? 
You are evil in the first place because you believe your way of existence is better than anybody else's way. If you look at truly evil people in history, such as, oh, I don't know, Stalin or Hitler, they were trying to make a better world for all of the people that they believed belonged there. Anybody who didn't, unfortunately, you were going to get gassed like my dogs. So, if you are truly evil, you are trying to take over the world, seize power, gain money, so you can make your life better. And by virtue, make those around you have a better life as well. So those are the six rules where if you live by them, you can play an evil character who quite happily cuts off the fingers of innocent children to get the information that they need in order to triumph over that goody two-shoes little elf or human or paladin or whatever the case might be. You don't sacrifice your fellow players because they are your witnesses to your true evil. You don't backstab them because you need them to help advance your cause. This is how you play a truly evil character. And the reason why I say it is because, remember, you're playing a cooperative game. If you're not cooperating with your fellow players, if you're backstabbing them, handing them over to the police, setting them up for all sorts of falls, you might be having fun, but after a while, they're going to wise up to your antics and then there's going to be that awkward situation at the table where everyone's like, hmm, you made it to gaming. Wow, that's, that's great. Cool. So you're still going to be stabbing us in the back, betraying us, giving us away to the enemy at every stage. This is so much fun. Yes. Don't be that villain. Be the villain who's truly evil by being truly good. And here's a little warning from my own personal experience. I had a player who decided that his druid character was disenfranchised with the party. They had decided not to act on a quest that he was hoping for, and so he decided to take it out on them. At every turn, he betrayed them. He allowed them to walk into deadly traps. He allowed them to get taken capture by the enemy. He gave away their presence when they were trying to sneak. He thought he was having a lot of fun because the players were trying to desperately survive all of these obstacles that he was throwing at them. That is, until he used a wish which the party was given for miraculously managing to survive. And, of course, as the GM, I made sure the wish came true to the letter and sent them back into the past 5,000 years and put them onto a different continent, a desert as a matter of fact. I have never had players murder a character in cold blood. But it happened. They were so irritated with this particular character and by facto the player that they simply murdered him. They collaboratively came together and attacked him. There was no joy, there was no relish, there was just an execution of the character and a very, very strong undercurrent to the player that if he didn't change his ways, he was not welcome. Needless to say, he did not attend the next session. I, of course, arrested the PCs because they killed the character on the doorstep of a giant temple to ancient gods, but that's a different story. So the point is, if you want to play an evil character, do your damnedest to be evil to everybody else except to your friends. Until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and happy playing.